Hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, webinar. My name is Amin, I'm an RF application engineer at uh, EMOX. So today we'll be looking at how to design efficient antenna radams. We'll be showing you in a few minutes how the use of HFWorks can help us achieving that. Uh, this is the uh, breakdown of the uh, presentation. So first we'll talk about radams, radam wall types, as well as some of the applications. Uh, following that, radium effects, characteristic of all design radiums, along with some simulation results, will be uh, demonstrated. At the end, we have a live demo, so in case if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the uh, presentation. Alright, so let's talk about uh, radiums. So, what do we mean by radiums? Radiums are simply structures or enclosures designed to protect an antenna and associated electronics from the surrounding environment and elements such as rain, snow, UV light, and strong wind. The proper selection of radium for a given antenna can actually help improve the overall system performance by maintaining alignment by eliminating wind loading, allowing for all weather operation. The use of radium can also help prevent the visual observation of the system as well as extending the component and system operating life. Uh, on the right, we can see an image of a uh, weather radar, which is uh, placed under the uh, aircraft radar. Uh, so basically, the uh, radar serves to protect the, uh, the antenna from different environmental conditions. So let's look at some of uh, radar wall types. The radar wall designing is a challenging task in the manufacture of antennas and the choice of wall construction will depend upon the requirements of applications. The wall must withstand for environmental effects just as erosion, rain, lightning strikes, aerodynamic loads. Radoms can be classified as monolithic and sandwich designs. There are two types of monolithic designs, half-wave radom and electric thin wall radoms. The uh, sandwich design can be ca characterized into A sandwich, B sandwich, C sandwich, and multi-layer dielectric wall. So at the bottom, we have an image showing different design of conventional radoms. So now we have talked about different type of uh, antenna radoms. So let's look at areas where radoms are being used. The use of radoms applies to a range of industries that require the protection of sensitive equipment, electronic components, and personnel. This include weather radar, satellite communication, maritime communications. The radoms are also being used in aviation, military and civil radar, as well as for broadcast equipment. Uh, on the right, we have uh, different images which shows the, uh, the use of uh, radom in uh, various uh, applications. So far, we have talked about the radom wall type and some of the areas where radoms are being used. So let's see the effect of uh, using uh, radoms. Well-designed radom provides environmental protection with the minimum effect on the RF performance of the antenna and the system. Electrically, the main concern for the radom is its contribution of the insertion loss. Insertion loss reduces the available signal, decreasing effective radiated power and the ability of the antenna to receive weak signal. Radoms can also increase the antenna side loops, resulting in interference with other communication systems and increasing the likelihood of signal detection and interception from unintended sources. Some other electrical effects of radom on antenna performance include the change in antenna beam width and the shifting of the antenna boresite. Radom can also impact antenna polarization as well as the input impedance or resonance frequency of the nearby uh, antennas. So let's look at some of the characteristics of uh, well-designed uh, radoms. Well-designed radom provides environmental protection with the minimum effect on the RF performance uh, of the antenna. In addition to the effect of the radom material, nothing degrades radom performance more than a thin sheet of water. Water has very high dielectric constant and loose tangent and microwave frequencies. 
non-hydrophobic surfaces cause water to stick to the radium, creating a thin film which serves as a shield to out of transmission, resulting in significant signal attenuation. Well-designed antenna radium not only provides environmental protection that extends the operational lifetime of the antenna and its component, it also contributes to the stable electrical performance over the lifetime of the system with reduced maintenance effort and downtime. So now we have provided with the uh, technical background regarding radium. So now let's look at the uh, case study which we'll be focusing today. Today we'll be looking at the uh, ice sandwich uh, radon. So for this we'll be looking at two designs, namely the uh, spherical uh, radon and the nose cone uh, radon. Uh, WR90 high direction horn antenna is uh, placed under a sandwich wall, uh, as can we see uh, at the bottom of the page. Uh, a sandwich wall is made with quartz skin. As for the core, Rohasa 110WF material is uh, being uh, used. Uh, radon geometry and spacing between the antenna and radon have profound effect on the antenna transmission uh, properties. So today we'll be looking at the, at the effect of <coughs> uh, tilting the antenna at different angles. Also we'll see the effect of changing the distance uh, between the antenna and radium as we can see uh, in the slide. So let's start with the uh, spherical uh, radium. Uh, at the right we have, uh, we can see an electric uh, field uh, animation. Uh, on the left, we have a, a magnetic field uh, uh, animation. One design, um, one design antenna, uh, one of the most important parameters to look at is, of course, the uh, return loss. Looking at the graph on the right, we can see that placing the antenna under, under the radon results in an increase of the return loss. And this is mainly due to the, uh, to the reflection from the uh, different layers of the uh, radon. When designing radon, one of the uh, parameters uh, antenna engine is looking at is the uh, radiation pattern. So basically, we'll be looking at, we'll be focusing on the antenna beam weight, uh, antenna bore sight, as well as the uh, side lobes. Uh, looking at 2D radiation pattern on the right, so we can see there is slight change in terms of the antenna gain, but the effect that we can notice is more for the uh, side lobes. So we can see there is no bore site error, but the only change in terms is the change in terms of the uh, uh, side lobes. Uh, on right, you can see the 3D radiation pattern of the antenna. In HFWorks, we have what we call the antenna far field uh, uh, parameters. Uh, under this table, we can see different antenna parameters such as the, the gain, directivity, mismatch efficiency, radiation efficiency, total efficiency, along with the uh, other parameters. So through uh, parametric study or through parameterization, so we wanted to see the effect of tilting the antenna at different angles, so namely 5 and 10 degrees. So we can see that moving the antenna at an angle of 5 degrees results in a change in terms of the side loops but we so the but there is no there is no change in terms of the antenna bore site as well as the gain uh, similarly for the 10 degrees case so we can see that there is no bore site error but the only change is uh, along the uh, side loops <coughs> so let's look at the uh, nose cone uh, radon on the right, we can see a vector plot of the electric uh, field uh, animation. Uh, through parametric study or through parametrization, we wanted to find the optimum distance between the antenna and radon, which results in uh, less return loss. So for instance, at 10.5 gigahertz, we can see that placing the antenna at one point, sorry, at 155 millimeter results in less return loss as compared to uh, other cases. 
uh, on right, we can see a 3D uh, radiation pattern of the antenna. Uh, on the left, uh, we can see uh, 2D radiation pattern uh, versus uh, different scenarios. So overall, we can see there is no change in terms of the antenna bore site as well as the, the antenna gain, but we can, we can notice there is a change in terms of the uh, uh, side loops. So looking, for instance, at D equal to 155 millimeter, we can see that there is slight change in terms of the uh, side loops as compared to uh, other cases. Uh, now we'll have a live demo. We'll be showing you how to simulate such uh, radomes using uh, uh, HFWorks. This is HFWorks and this is SOLIDWORKS. HFWorks is uh, fully embedded in SOLIDWORKS and is called certified by uh, SOLIDWORKS. So basically you don't need to import your CAD geometry. When you are done creating your geometry in SOLIDWORKS, you can just go ahead and start your simulation using uh, HFWorks. In HFWorks, basically we have four types of study. We have antennas, as parameter, tedia, and resins. But today we'll focus on antennas. Today we'll be looking at two design configurations, namely spherical radome and nose cone uh, radome. So for each study, basically we have uh, three main steps. First, we need to specify the uh, frequency range. So, so for example, we can specify the type of uh, frequency sweep, whether is it discrete sweep, fast sweep, single point. Also, you can import the uh, frequency from a file. You can also s specify the start frequency as well as the end frequency along with the uh, number of frequencies. Also, you can specify your uh, uh, frequency step size. As for the mesh, we have two types of mesh. We have the manual mesh, we have the adaptive mesh. So if we set the mesh to adaptive, so the software will try to figure out the uh, appropriate mesh for your uh, design. If you are interested in studying the thermal distribution for your structure, you can click on the thermal coupling. Also, you can specify the level of accuracy. Is it normal or high accuracy? Next, you need to set up the uh, material. So for this, so you right click, set apply material. So we have the material library, which consists of uh, materials uh, from uh, different uh, vendors. For instance, and the substrate. So we have, for example, Rogers. We have uh, different materials from uh, Rogers Company, as well as from uh, uh, Mitsubishi. Also, if you want to edit the, mat your, the material properties, you can simply right click set edit material, and then you can edit the uh, material property that you want to. Uh, also, you can, uh, if you want to apply your own material, you simply say right click set apply material. So you can either load your material label or, or apply a new material. Next, you need to specify the uh, boundary conditions. And the boundary condition, we can see, we can see, we can see we have uh, different uh, boundary conditions such as port, lumped port, lumped element, PEC, PMC, PEC symmetry, PMC symmetry radiation boundary as well as the signal. Also, if you sometimes you need, for example, to apply a mesh control on, on certain area of your structure, if you want to do that, you simply right click, say apply, make, apply mesh control. You can apply mesh control on bodies, faces, or edges. Also, you can specify the uh, element size. Also, sometimes, for example, if you want to study the effect of of different parameters on the performance of your structure, you can do what we call the parameterization or parametric study. So, for instance, in this example, we want to study the effect of uh, changing the antenna at different angles. So, for this, we have uh, three uh, scenarios, 0 degree, 5 degree, and 10 degrees. All right, so let's look at our uh, design. So this is the, uh, the horn antenna. 
So as for the radon, so we have basically three layers since it's uh, a sandwich. So for the skin, we have quartz, and for the uh, for the core, rohasol was applied. So as for the boundary condition, this is our port. So we apply the PEC, and for the air is our radiation uh, boundary. So for this, we want to study uh, different uh, scenarios. So maybe I can change the view. All right. So for this, under parameterization, you say display geometry. Example for case one, which is which corresponds to zero degree, and case two, which corresponds for five degrees, and for the third case, which corresponds to ten degrees. Now let's look at some uh, of these simulation results. In HFOX, we have what we call the uh, uh, results table. Under this table, we can see different parameters such as generalized S matrix, renormalized S matrix, impedance matrix, admittance matrix, port results, VSWR. You can also print versus current frequency or frequencies. Also, you can export your results to different formats such as <coughs> text file, CIT, SPC, or touch cell. Also for the plot, for the TD plot, we can uh, plot different uh, parameters. We can also, diff also uh, plot the parameter versus uh, various scenarios. So for example, you can plot as parameter impedance, admittance, VSWR. So for example, in our case, let's say if you want to plot the return loss versus all scenarios, So we can simply see the return loss for different uh, uh, scenarios. So now let's look at the uh, antenna far field uh, parameters. In HFOX, we have what we call the antenna far field uh, parameters. So as we can see, we can see different uh, antenna parameters such as the maximum gain, maximum directivity. Uh, mismatch efficiency, radiation efficiency, as well as the total efficiency. We can again print versus current frequency or frequencies. Also, we can export to uh, uh, different formats. So let's look at the uh, 2D radiation pattern. So for this case, for case one, which correspond to zero degree, so. So we can see that the, the antenna with radon induces some uh, loss in terms of the, the gain. So if you want to uh, plot the 2D radiation pattern, you simply said right click, you said polar plot, polar plot 2D, and then you can specify the, uh, the scenario that you want. So for instance, for this with radon scenario 1, and you want, in, you want the gain in dB. Same thing with the uh, no radon, with the uh, same case. Yeah. Also, we can uh, see the uh, the 3D radiation pattern. Also, if you want to include the 3D model, you simply right click, set in the definition, and then click on the gray model. Also, we can see new electric field uh, animation. If you want to animate, say simply right click, say animate, animate uh, versus phase. Yeah, you can clearly see the animation of the electric field. Also, if you see, if you want to see the electric field animation of the electric field, you simply right click, say plot format to vector. And then again, you right click set animate versus phase. You can also see the magnetic field. 
from to animate again said uh, hk said uh, animate So now let's look at the uh, nose cone uh, design. So let's start with the uh, geometry. So this is again our horn antenna. And for the radon, so again we have three layers, quartz and rohassau. So this is the air, which is our absorbing boundary. So for this scenario, we want to see the effect of the spacing between the antenna and radon. Maybe I need to hide the air. So to see these scenarios, simply right click, say the, for example, scenario one. Yeah. And also, this is uh, scenario two. And for the last scenario, so we're getting closer was the in the radon so for the uh, for the scenarios so first you have d equal to 140 millimeter for the second is 155 millimeter and for the last case you have a distance of uh, 170 uh, millimeter so if you want to plot the s parameter for different scenarios so for example we said the nose cone with the radon scenario one db same thing with nose can without radon we can simply compare versus one scenario also we can compare versus uh, different uh, scenarios so let's look at the uh, 2d radiation pattern for all the uh, scenarios so we can clearly see the uh, radiation pattern of the uh, the three scenarios as compared with the uh, with the antenna without uh, uh, radon. So this is the uh, 3D radiation pattern. If you want to include the 3D model, you click on the great model view. Also, you can see the animation of the electric field. Here comes the end of the live uh, demo. So to summarize, you have learned some of the radon design challenges and some ways to design efficient radons that protect the antenna from the environment while having a minimal effect on its RF performance. You have also learned that the radon geometry and spacing between the antenna and radon can have profound effect on antenna transmission properties. A sandwich radon proves to have a good performance at different wave incident angles. Lastly, we have demonstrated how easy and efficient HFOX is in designing robust and efficient antenna radons. With that, I would like to thank you, and now the floor is open for questions.